Can you just name a few songs you slip in your mind at this moment? Which songs you you most mostly like? Stone le- songs? No, or rock and roll songs? Um, uh, well, anyway. uh, well, I like Brown Sugar. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a good rock and roll song. Yeah, Honky Tonk Women. Sway. Uh, Help. I know them. It's from John Paul George and Ringo. <laughs> the, the group I like most. I so uh, yeah. I like that song. Yeah. I, I like the words too. <laughs> uh, let's go back to those do those days in '69 till '74. Um, in that period, you played with the Rolling Stones. You also played on Let It Bleed and Sticky Fingers and uh, with other uh, um, uh, albums. Um, I think this question has been asked you for, let's say, a million or a thousand times. I don't know. Yes. Um, <laughs> you didn't know. Well, you don't know the question yet, so that's why. Um, What's your favorite? What's your favorite album of the Stones you played on? Oh, the favorite album. I, my personal favorite is uh, probably Sticky Fingers. Mm-hmm. Why? Um, because I think um, uh, I, I I like songs. I like the songs and the playing. And uh, and that album is full with nice songs. I I think so. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, I also like I, I like Exile on Main Street for a diff- for different reasons. Um, and what are those Ex- reasons? Exile on Main Street mm-hmm. at the time, I didn't particularly like, um, uh, and I don't really think, I don't really think it was uh, uh, anybody else in the Rolling Stones really liked it at the time. But I think it's there's, the stature of that album has grown over the years, mm-hmm. um, it, and so now it's considered to be, um, you know, one of the classic Rolling Stones albums. Yeah, it, it's, it's a double album, and it's got, um, it's it's got lots of. Uh, blues roots as well mm-hmm. it, it's often said uh, while you were in the Rolling Stones it was a very important period for that group is that true that was an important period for me as well yeah yeah, yeah. What, what did you learn huh? what did you learn which you still use I learned how to uh, I learned how to dance <laughs> Mick, Mick Jagger taught me how to dance he really did yeah C- can you explain how to dance um, what's what well was I it can't like explain it I can show you yeah, yeah but it's <laughs> not no use for radio but no I, I no, I act, actually, to, um, I'm not being funny or anything, but uh, he, uh, he, in a in a way, I um, I, I learned a lot, a lot a lot about all different aspects of music and recording when I was with the Rolling Stones. Before mm-hmm. b- before I joined the Rolling Stones, I was primarily a blues guitar player, yeah. and my job was to play blues guitar behind John Mayall's Blues Breakers. Yeah. When one ca- a question I received from one of the fans is regarding the the, the songs you played, like uh, Kim and Shelter, and um, the improvisations you did on stage. Yeah, because I can imagine uh, uh, Stones uh, are being pol- uh, a polished band. Um, was that discussed before uh, you did did improvisation on stage? No, we, we used to talk about everything but music. We mm. never used to talk about music. We just no. used to play it. <laughs> I mean, seriously, we ne- uh, they never ever approached music, and probably still don't in, in an intellectual sense. Of that or, or we just—I mean, really, it, it, we just used to pick pick our guitars up and sit down and play. And um, if something worked, it worked. And because you already the, all uh, there, there spoke the same language, like musical. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, the way it works. Yeah, and, and we all we all. Uh, like I said before, Mick, uh, w- w- one thing I noticed about Mick. Mick and Keith. Uh, mm-hmm. As soon as I joined the band, was that um, that they were they uh, they they developed their own style of songwriting, um, you know, from satisfaction onwards, and and they got better and better at, at writing really, you know, classic rock and roll songs. But they were always always uh, uh, they always used to like to listen to um, uh, blues music. Yeah, but no, before you joined the Stones, did you like, did like you always like uh, did you always like all uh, Stone songs, or did you dislike? Some? No, I, no, no. I I I always liked the Stones because the Stones uh, when the when when the Stones first started making records, they basically uh, were doing um, covers of Chicago blues t- tunes. Um, yeah, and it's one of your favorite music, huh? Uh, blues music. Yeah, yeah. We already it's, discussed. It's, so it's it's my uh, it's my it's it's. The field of, field of music that I feel most comfortable expressing my own style of playing in, yeah. 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 So you were very honored to 
um, was asked to play in the, in the Rolling Stones. Before that, you, you liked the music, you liked the blues, bluesy uh, music. and Yeah, yeah. What happened when, when they asked you? Can, can you can we go back to those uh, to those years uh, and which they which way did they ask you to join the Stones? Well, I, I well um, I think actually jo- it was John Mayle who who was an old friend of uh, theirs from their their blue, the days when they both used to uh, John Mayle's Blues Breakers and the Stones both used to play uh, <coughs> in and around London in the same kind of blues clubs. Uh-huh like places like the Station Hotel Richmond and um, the Crawdaddy Club and all these famous rhythm and blues clubs. Yeah. So he knew them anyway and he knew that, that uh, they were looking for a guitar player and I think um, he, he was a, he was more aware of the fact that they uh, were interested in um, asking me to join them than I was. In fact, it was John Mayle that told me that they uh, were looking for a guitar player and, and to expect a call from Mick. Yeah, and I was invited down to um, uh, Olympic Studios in in Paris, London. Okay, London. Okay, yeah. Uh, to um, put the finishing touches to a couple of tracks on um, "Let It Bleed," one of the famous albums from '69. Eh? Yeah. Okay, um, and then uh, the time came. You left the Stones, uh, December 12, 1974. Y- yes, December 1974. Yeah. 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 Uh, we just talked about how you started with the Stones. Let's talk a little bit about when you left. What's what's the real truth reason you left the Stones? Well, I was it often I said? I'm still trying to figure out what the real reason is myself. <laughs> um, but I, I, um, like like I, I'll have to sort of generalize it. Otherwise, it, it'll take ages for me, me me to even come anywhere close to explaining. But uh, the Rolling Stones in those days, in the 60s and 70s, was such a 24-hour-a-day intense lifestyle experience Mm -hmm. that um, uh, the whole band went through periods of highs and lows. And um, uh, it wasn't... uh, It's completely unlike being in a band today uh, and being in the Rolling Stones today. I mean, we, we basically used to uh, live together and uh, work together, tour together. So you more and or we less... Made, and, and we, and we, we, and if, if you think about it, those those five or six years were probably the, the most productive years, not just in terms of quantity of, of uh, music, but quality as well. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, at the end, the, uh, around about the end of 1974, I got very disillusioned with it and um musically or just um well not not really disillusioned with the music i I like the music Mm -hmm. but um uh i i didn't feel that i could really uh broaden my horizons as a as a guitar player or as a musician um and um and, and so i left yeah you know after that you played with jack bruce uh, yeah, that was. I mean, and that was like going from to a completely different extreme. Mm-hmm. Was it uh, a, a day and night extreme, or? Well, actually, there were lots of sim- similarities between okay. Jack Bruce and um, and uh, Keith Richards, but I'm not going to go into those. No, no, no. But uh, <laughs> uh, all all your career in non, the non-musical similarities. Yeah, right.